everybody, this is Tracy Chen and I'm an immigration lawyer from Australia. lawyer at Mason Chen Law Group. For those of you who don't know me, I've dropped our contact link below if you want to get in contact with myself or one of our fantastic lawyers or migration agents. We help clients across Australia as well as overseas with all their migration and visa related matters. Now you may have seen in my previous videos that skilled migration in Australia, you migrate through your occupation. So your occupation could be registered nurse, your occupation could be mechanical engineer or even doctor. However, in Australia, we have this thing called occupation list. And if your occupation is on that list, then you potentially could migrate to Australia through that occupation. And Australia invites applicants to apply for permanent residency or temporary visas based on the demand for the occupation during that time. So the occupation we will talk about today is community worker. So back to what I was saying previously, Australia invites people to apply for permanent residency or one of the regional temporary work visas based on the demand for the occupation. So you may have seen in the last two years, there was a lot of demand for healthcare occupations. So you may have heard doctors, nurses, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, all these healthcare allied health occupations were being invited to apply for permanent residency. And obviously that was because of the pandemic. There was just a huge demand. In Australia, there was a time where nurses, doctors, allied health professionals were very, very burnt out. And so Australia needed more skilled workers to work in the workforce. And one of the ones that have been hotly talked about over the last two years is community worker. So today I want to debunk some of the myths, you know, break it down for you and really talk about if this occupation is a good option for permanent residency or if you already are a community worker, you will learn how you can apply for permanent residency. Now, before we get started, I really appreciate if you can like and subscribe and share this video with people who need it. It really helps my channel. So first of all, what does a community worker do? Now, to make this very clear, this occupation is very different to occupation such as personal care aid or support worker. They're completely different occupations. And people ask me, you know, how do you tell? Well, first of all, you look at the job ad. The job roles are a little bit different. And in Australia, normally to be a community worker, you must have a qualification minimum of diploma in community services. So that's kind of the breakdown and how you would tell. Now, if you have got a job as a support worker or a personal care aid, and you know to do that job, you did a certificate two or certificate three, and you were successful in landing that role, in Australia, then you know that that's not community services. It's very different. So first of all, I'm just going to put briefly what are some of the duties that a community worker actually does. So some of the example here is assessing your client needs and planning support programs for them. You would assess their situation and refer them to other agencies if it's required. So if you need other health professionals to potentially intervene on this, and obviously you are assisting and guiding people to solve any of their social and financial problems. There are a number of settings that community workers do work in. It can be aged care homes, it could be community service centers. Yeah, so those are just some of the examples. And one other note is not to get this occupation confused with social worker. Social worker, again, is very different and I will talk about that in a separate video. So let's assume you do have a diploma of community services. You would need a skills assessment and then you need to meet the minimum English requirements and then potentially you could submit an expression of interest to be invited for permanent residency in Australia. Now, just an example, we recently had applicants who were invited in Victoria, South Australia and New South Wales to apply for the 190 visa, which is permanent residency. So let's take a step back and see how you can actually get yourself on one of these pathways. So first of all, the key thing to any skilled migration application is the skills assessment. And this is where a lot of people get caught out because you need to know what it takes to be eligible for a skills assessment. Now, this occupation specifically community worker is assessed by the Australian Community Workers Association. So in short, it's ARQUA, we call it. And the easiest way forward for this is to study an ARQUA accredited course. If it's not accredited by ARQUA, you'll run into issues later when you're applying for the skills assessment because you may need extra work experience to actually qualify. So I'll drop a link below so you can search the ARQUA accredited courses. So if you're looking to study this in Australia, when you're speaking with your migration agent, 
agent, student agent, and if they're referring community worker courses to you, it's actually called a Diploma of Community Services or Bachelor of Community Services. Make sure that it is accredited by Aqua. So for example, I'm just having a look on the website here. Now this also changes from time to time, the accreditation status. So you really need to keep up to date with it. So just an example, I can see here a diploma of community services at Stotts College is accredited by Aqua and Bachelor of Community and Human Services at Federation University is also accredited. You can choose to study a diploma or bachelor. Both are fine. It also depends on your requirements for your studies. But in Australia, a community service worker, the minimum qualification is a diploma so really you only need a diploma to get a skills assessment now you will see that if you study an accredited degree once you complete it all you need to do is submit this to aqua and they will give you a positive skills assessment now if the degree is not accredited you need to look at some of the other options so for example we had a client who did a bachelor in community services however it was a non-accredited degree so she worked one year as a community worker then using that bachelor degree plus the one year of work experience, she was able to obtain a positive skills assessment. So that's kind of how we will go. So assuming you've got the qualification and it's Aqua accredited or you gain one year work experience, look, depending on the situation, you really need to get specific advice on that if you studied a non-accredited degree. So once you graduate, you'll be able to apply for a skills assessment. Now, a lot of people, once they graduate, they start working as a community worker. A community worker in Australia gets paid pretty well as well. So a lot of people do end up, you know, going into that occupation. So you'll start working and then you'll have some options there. So the community worker is on the short term occupation list. So if you're looking at skilled migration specifically, you're not eligible for the 189 visa. You're only eligible for the 491 or the 190 visa. There's a couple of other employer sponsored visa options, but those are basically your options. I'll put the options down below so you can have a look into it. But let's just say, for example, you are in Victoria. So you're working in Melbourne as a community worker. You've completed your diploma of community services and you've gone and done your English. Now, the minimum requirements for any skilled migration application is competent English, which is six in each band. But as you know, your application will get picked by being the best. So if you have higher points or whatever, it is important. So if you are able to score higher in English, absolutely go for it. PTE, superior English, 79 in each band, or PTE, proficient English, which is equivalent to 65 in each band. Then getting that, you will be able to submit an expression of interest, registration of interest, you will submit your information there, and fingers crossed, you'll be invited to apply for the 190 visa. Now, again, we have had clients in Victoria that have been invited so based on experience, I think it's a really good opportunity for community service workers today. Now, if you are in another state, it's important to check the state requirements. And at the end of the day, community worker is only available under 491 and 190. So you definitely need state sponsorship for that. So if you want to know the specific requirements for a 491 or 190 visa, I've got other videos so you can check it out there. They're the specific requirements. But today's video is obviously specific about the occupation community services. Now, normally this this diploma is 18 months to 24 months. So it's something for you to consider. The ones that are usually 12 months are not accredited. So be very careful on that. I have had consultations with a lot of people who have studied an unaccredited degree. And it's just, you know, a bit of miscommunication, I think there on that side, because you've got to make it very clear to your study agent, you know, what you're looking for. Because if you say you want to do a community services degree, you know, they will think, okay, great. You know, here is the best option for you. Might even be the cheapest option, which they would think you would want. But you've got to make your intentions very clear to them and make sure you get the right advice, you know, surrounding that as well. So what do I think about this occupation? Look, in the last couple of years when people have asked me, you know, what should I study? I definitely have recommended this course. One, because of the time frame, it's 18 to 20 months. So I think it's very attractive. The cost wise, it's not as expensive as some of the other degrees out there. And it is in demand. You know, I know that there are a lot of settings that want more community workers, especially aged care homes. So it's something to really think about. It's a great career here in Australia as well. There's plenty of opportunity for career development. So it's something for you to look into. But the key takeaway from today's video is if you choose to become a community worker, please make sure it's something that you actually enjoy. Please make sure that the degree you're studying is accredited or if it's not accredited that you are well informed on that and you know that you need to do one year work experience and you're totally okay with that. There's nothing wrong with that either. We have had plenty of clients who 
didn't study an accredited degree and they had to work one year and they did it and they were successful in applying for permanent residency. But some people, you know, don't really want that. So it's very important that you are clear on that situation yourself. And three, because it's state sponsored, so under the 491 or 190 visa, you do need to be aware of the requirements for the state at the time, but it's not something to stress out about. First study the course and then if you need to relocate, you totally can. Another fun fact is that not all states have accredited diplomas in community services. I've looked into this. Most states have accredited bachelors, but there are a lot of states that don't have accredited diplomas. So you have to check. Some people are like, oh, I want to study in South Australia because of permanent residency pathway is good there. Well, last time I checked, I don't actually think there was a diploma in community services there. Anyways, I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any other occupations you want to learn about, drop a comment below and I will do my best to get to them. Our contact details are below. So if you want to get in contact to us, send an email to us. And also I have mini courses that I have released on courses.tracymigration.com.au. The link is below. You can access some of my free courses to learn more about migration. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.